Americans for Fair Taxation presents the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation, and recorded by Bob Paxton, a volunteer with the Florida Fair Tax Educational Association. And now, this week's Chairman's Report. Hello, I'm Bob Paxton with the AFFT Chairman's Report for Friday, January 13th, 2023. Want to save Social Security? Pass the Fair Tax. The Social Security Act was signed into law by President Franklin Roosevelt in 1935. The idea was that the Social Security benefits are paid from the contributions of current workers. In 1940, there were 159.4 workers for each Social Security recipient. Now, there are less than 2.8 workers for each recipient, and that number is expected to decrease to just two workers for each recipient over the next 10 years. The money is supposed to be put into a trust fund, and any excess above what's needed to pay benefits is borrowed by the Treasury in exchange for an IOU from the government. It's also important to understand that in 1960, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in Fleming v. Nestor that there is no binding obligation to provide people benefits even if a person paid into the system for a number of years. The court made it clear that Congress can amend and revise the schedule of benefits, and they can also change who is entitled to receive them. Social Security has become an important source of income for retirees and people approaching retirement. The Social Security Administration published these facts. 69.8 million people received benefits from programs administered by the Social Security Administration in 2020. 5.8 million people were newly awarded Social Security benefits in 2020, and 55% of adult Social Security beneficiaries in 2020 were women. A 2017 study by the Social Security Administration found that 19.7% of Americans aged 65 and over received at least 90% of their total income from Social Security. Other studies from the National Institute for Retirement Security believe that number is much higher. As people approach retirement, many are counting on their Social Security for most, if not all, of their retirement income. Now, even those with other sources of income count on Social Security to provide a needed supplement to ensure that they'll have enough income to be comfortable in their retirement. For many, a reduction in their Social Security payments will result in having to ask their children for financial aid or even force them to move in with their children. An analysis of the recent Congressional Budget Office study on the growing insolvency of Social Security was published by Rachel Gressler, a research fellow in economics, budget, and entitlements in the Grover M. Herman Center for the Federal Budget of the Institute of Economic Freedom at the Heritage Foundation. Here are some of her observations. Current law requires that Social Security benefits come from within the program, so once the trust fund runs dry, Social Security will only be able to pay as much in benefits as it receives from current workers. That will mean in 2033, the typical retiree will have an approximate $5,000 cut in annual benefits. The average disability recipient will have their benefits reduced by about $4,000. Now, The only way to avoid these cuts is to immediately increase the Social Security tax on current workers from the current 12.4% to 17.2%. This would mean an increase from the current employee payment of $4,402 up to $6,106 in Social Security taxes for a household earning the median income of $71,000. Anyone who is 56 or younger today will not reach Social Security's normal retirement age of 67 before the program runs out of money. And anyone who is currently between the ages of 57 and 107 today, who's still alive and collecting benefits in 2033, will also be subject to benefit cuts. If policymakers fail to act and benefit cuts begin in 2033, the CBO estimates that people born in the 1960s will experience a 19% reduction in their lifetime benefits. Those born in the 1970s will experience a 26% reduction, and those born in the 1980s and 1990s will experience a 27% reduction. 
Research from the Heritage Foundation shows that the average younger worker could have three times as much retirement income if they'd been able to own and invest their Social Security taxes. And even the lowest income workers would still have 40% more. Now let's look at the fair tax solution. It's simple. Instead of taxing a decreasing number of workers to fund the promised benefits to Social Security recipients, the fair tax extends the tax base for Social Security to everyone whose spending rises above the poverty level. Now, this includes many wealthy individuals who pay little to nothing under the current system because they make their money from investments and capital gains, not from working for a paycheck. Changing the funding source for Social Security from a payroll tax to the fair tax would ensure the future solvency of the program, while the prebate would ensure that no one pays taxes on their basic necessities. With the fair tax, it will be simple to see the percentage of the fair tax needed to pay Social Security benefits and where cuts may be made in other spending areas to finance these benefits without having to increase the national debt every year. In conclusion, we all know that many in D.C. and in Congress privately see the Social Security crisis as an opportunity to exert more control over us and to move their agenda forward. These people arrogantly believe that they, and only they, know what's best for us. Now, they also know that current law demands that Social Security payments must be made out of the Social Security Trust Fund. When that fund runs dry, then the amount of money available to pay benefits will be limited to just what's being collected from current workers. Now, of course, they could always change the law, but they see this as a great opportunity to raise the payroll tax, especially on people earning higher incomes. They could also make drastic changes to who qualifies for benefits and how much they receive. For example, they could decide that people who have other sources of income or whose assets exceed a certain level will receive greatly reduced benefits or even no benefits at all. It's entirely possible that people who are forced to pay into the system for decades could end up getting little or nothing back. Now, while we can't predict exactly what changes will be made, we know one thing for certain. Now, no matter what they come up with, the DC elites will most certainly just smile at us and say, well, that's fair, isn't it? Well, there's a much fairer, much simpler, and much more efficient way to do it. The fair tax. The fair tax doesn't pick winners and losers. Because it taxes spending, not earnings, the fair tax lets everyone save for their retirement tax-free. The fair tax collects the revenue the federal government needs to operate, but does it in a way that has the least impact on our individual freedom and the least impact on our economic prosperity. With a fair tax, there are no tax returns to file, no records to keep. We pay our federal taxes when we make retail purchases of new goods and services, and with a fair tax, there's no need for the IRS. If you sell a used couch or a used jet ski online, there's no fair tax due on that transaction. The fair tax will allow us to take back control. The income payroll tax system is broken. It's no longer working. We can't repair it, but we can replace it with the fair tax. So join us and take back control of our country and our lives, not with bullets, but with the elimination of one of the biggest threats to our liberty and economic prosperity, the income payroll tax. We should all remember Edmund Burke's warning that applies to our efforts to take back control. Nobody made a greater mistake than he who did nothing because he could only do a little. We should also remember this quote from George Orwell's 1984, which, if we do nothing, may foretell your and your children's future. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. So what can each of us do? We can write letters and make calls to our elected representatives and attend Zoom town hall meetings demanding that if they really want to allow Americans to take back control, the first step is to eliminate the income payroll tax system and enact the fair tax. Take back control. Help us pass the fair tax. The IRS will be gone and will pay our taxes when we make purchases. We, not the ruling class and their minions in D.C., will decide how much federal tax we pay and will know how much tax we're paying because taxes will no longer be hidden from us. They'll be clearly shown on every retail receipt. So if you have friends who don't know about the fair tax, send them to fairtax.org. Have them watch the whiteboards under how it works, and if they agree, ask them to please join us. 
Then, contact your members of Congress and the President and demand that Congress pass the fair tax. The only truly fair tax. This has been the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation. Check back every week for news and information about the fair tax and learn why the fair tax should replace our antiquated federal income tax system. If you'd like to receive a copy of the Chairman's Report in your inbox every week, sign up at fairtax.org. 